All right, Detroit Lions riddled with injuries, but with that comes opportunities for guys that are really good that just probably wouldn't have got an opportunity or, look, they need to get it done, step up, and make something happen. So one of those guys is Brandon Joseph. And I'm going to get into this dude was a stud in college, and PFF ranked him the best safety in college football. So we'll get to that in just a second. Why is Brandon Joseph up and playing safety? He's a rookie undrafted that we grabbed. Here is why. If you remember, here we go. C.J. Gardner-Johnson out. Kirby Joseph out. So now Tracy Walker gets gets put into the starting lineup. And Ify Melanfonwu, that scares the crap out of me. Those two are safeties. Tracy, fine, right? But Ify just hasn't played much, man. Like, it's his third year, right? And he has just has not played. And then, of course, oh, Will Harris. Shout out to Will Harris for just staying on the team for all these years, being not good at anything, but just good enough to stay on the team. Shout out to Will. I mean, he's he's on the team and he keeps making the team. So you got Tracy Walker and Iffy are your starting safeties. Then behind that, you really got nothing. I mean, Will Harris can play it in a pinch, like it says right here. Shout out to Pride of the Pride of Detroit. They've got this article going. But uh, who's like kind of just your primary safety? Well, it's gonna be brandon joseph so i was looking up brandon joseph couldn't really remember what what the story was on him he goes to northwestern red he's a he red shirts as a as a true freshman but as a red shirt freshman he was named first team all big 10 and he was named freshman of the year in 2020 2020 and then in 2021 going into that season man this guy was first ap first first team preseason walter camp Camp award watch list, uh, Bednarica watch list, Thorpe watch list, Athlon Sports preseason All American, PFF All American first team, Phil Steele All American first team, voted team captain. Like the guy was a star. He's 6'1, 200, 210. He's fast. He's he can do everything on the field. Now he's a rookie, right? So it's like we got to temper our expectations. But my point is. Didn't even know we had this guy sitting there that we could use. So we call him up. From He's on the practice squad. He just missed the initial 53-man roster out of camp. Now, all of a sudden, he comes in, and he could end up playing a lot. I don't know. Again, he's a rookie. Didn't make the team. Practice squad. Now he's called into action, and that's football. And I don't care what level of football that you've played. You've experienced this or, or watch or whatever. You experience this. Bang. Injury. Next guy up. Injury there. You never know. So our two starting safeties have gone out. And, and now we've got to elevate our other two backups. And now the backups back up. Right? So it's just crazy. And so the good news is the Atlanta Falcons don't have a high-powered aerial attack. But I think... With this news, the Atlanta Falcons are going to run the ball. That's what they try. That's what they want to do. And that's what they're going to try to do. Oddly enough, the Detroit Lions couldn't get any pressure. The defensive line looked weak, but yet did really well against the run. But pass rush and making Geno Smith uncomfortable last week just wasn't there at all. So it's been two games, right? We beat the Chiefs. Look, look not good against the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know. This is a huge game for Lions fans because we need to see our defense be much better. And I get it. Got a lot of injuries, but so what? I mean, right. <laughs> so what? This is an Atlanta Falcons team. Are you kidding me? Desmond Ritter, a rookie running back. They've got splash players for sure around the offensive side of the ball. And they've got a good run defense, but come on, this is a team that's us like a year ago or a year before that they're in the rebuild. We believe that we are a playoff team that's going to compete for the division. I know the injuries are there, but this is a this is a game you got to have. It's at home. And and by the way, the home thing with the Lions is the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced in my life. That crowd couldn't have been more crazy, full, packed, sold out. Everything is there for you. Falc or the the Seahawks just didn't even care. Just seven yard pass, six yard pass, seven yard pass, four yard run, seven. And it's like, is, is, the, is the crowd not affecting you guys? No, it's not. I don't know. Ford Field becoming this the easiest place to play. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Brandon Joseph, did you know about him? Thoughts on him? Also, 
Where does this game rank for you as far as big game? It's so weird. It's week three against the Atlanta Falcons. Why is this a big game? Because you're on a short week next week at Green Bay, a divisional game that you got to have if you lose this game. But I think both of these games, Atlanta and the Green Bay game, are games that you have to win because you're going to go through stretches. Doesn't matter what part of the season, early, mid, late, where you you're got a lot of injuries and you just got to find a way. And we have a quarterback that's good enough to help us find a way. You've got the quarterback. You've got players like this. And this is where Brad Holmes, the scouting, all the stuff that you do, really, it's like, all right, you know, this is where it's, you got to have it got to have the scouting got to have the depth got to have the players that you're calling up another player is, you know zonovan knight from the jets who man he was a good player for the jets and got some action last year when they're i can't remember his name the uh, rookie running back for them went out so like let's go let's go zonovan knight give me a little splash give me something and so st brown's gonna go we got we got enough that's that's the point. We have enough. We have to win this game against the Atlanta Falcons, and then we have to win next week. And you're three and one. Guys are coming back from injury a little bit. The bye week's approaching. Like there's this is, I mean, this is the, the NFL season. What happens if you lose both of these and you're one and three? Oh my gosh. I mean, you, that's hard to overcome. It's hard. It just shows, okay, we don't have the depth, we don't have the culture that we thought we did but we are plenty good enough to beat this team. Jared Goff is better than Desmond Ritter. Jameer Gibbs, let's go. Laporta is going to, I mean, he he just keeps getting better. I mean, he looked from game one, he looked good. Then game two, he looks really good. We've got all the pieces to handle this adversity is what they say, right? But at the end of the day, Bill Parcells, you are what your record is. We're one and one. We're totally fine. But you have to, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the injuries. It doesn't matter what's going on. You have to find a way to win. So, again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Craig and I will be going live right after the game. As soon as the game ends, we go live, talk about it. Just, man, it, this feels like a huge, huge game that I didn't expect in week three. Because if you lose the, if you're fully healthy and you lose this game, it's like, all right, well, it's like, we got to get these wins from manageable teams while we can because we're not going to play manageable winnable games every week. This is a this is not the Eagles. This is not the the you know, name another good team. It's not it's not that. We got we got to be able to win the, this game. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll see all of you on the